Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Crime. Uh, I mean, the Nostalgia Critique. I remember it so you don't have to. Back in 2014-15, you couldn't surf the web without coming across Five Nights at Freddy's. That game was just everywhere. Gameplays invaded anyone's YouTube homepage, fan art exploded, Rule 34 went nuts, and furries had found their piece of paradise. It's exactly the kind of environment that allowed a highly intelligent, tall and handsome criminal insect who wrote this stuff. Extremely skillful animator from Italy called Tony Grinite to create his masterpiece. Or is it? According to a very old 2017 interview, at the beginning Tony made the 30 second of FNAF animation without any particular plot in mind, but eventually decided to go on with the story just because people seemed to like it, even though he never had a precise idea about the final product until the very last episode. Wow, I can only imagine how meticulously written this thing must be. Well, in 2019, the movie was over and uploaded on YouTube for everyone to enjoy. Is it as good and Oscar-worthy as many prestigious critics say? Let's find out together! Ah! What the heck? I didn't expect to be scared by a movie based on a horror game! So, the movie begins with Chica and Foxy arguing about... something, I guess? And it's already time for a paraculata! What's a paraculata, you may ask? According to my Italian dictionary, the paraculata is a lazy animator's favorite trick. Who needs to fully animate Foxy and Chica when you can just make their silhouettes on the wall? Just go for a paraculata! Be prepared, I have a feeling you'll hear that word a lot during this video. A paraculata! Anyway, Foxy is upset. But Mangle touches his shoulder, smiles at him, and it's suddenly love at first sight! Chica is a far, far memory by now. The psychological complexity of these characters amazes me. By the way, what's this Lola Bunny vibe I get with Mangle? I mean, Tony Crynite is known for his family-friendly content, right? Okay, I'm not gonna touch that subject anymore. The melodrama rushes in when Chica spots the newly formed couple and bursts into tears. So, I don't really get it. Did Chica have a crush on Foxy? Were they actually engaged? Is Foxy cheating on Chica after a fight? I guess only Tony knows the truth. Pfft, not. Well, I'm sure Chica will maturely bear her pain and go on with her life OR SHE'LL JUST GET A MACHETE AND TEAR MANGLE TO PIECES WITH BLOOD RED EYES?! WHAT THE F***?! Yep, this is one of the beloved main characters in these stories, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid to meet the villains at this point. Mangle is desperate because she doesn't have an oversexualized body anymore and Foxy won't find her attractive. Yeah, that's all love is about. But no, Foxy is actually really fond of Mangle and won't let her down. Our sex might be a little weird from now on, but don't worry, we'll get creative. Oh, and Mangle turns black for some reason. Actually, there's plenty of black glitches. <laughs> that's what you get with a cheap colorist. Chica is deeply sorry for what she has done and decides to fix the problem, so she picks Mangle's original projects and asks Bonnie to help her out. I'm not sure if he's the right person for the job. That's not the way to use a ranch, Bonnie! Chica starts crying and Bonnie comforts her, and it's love at first sight again, Foxy is a far, far memory by now. Come on, Tony, Brazilian soap operas have more plausible plots than this. Mangle is still upset by the way she looks and goes berserk. What's this red eyes thing, by the way? So she stalks Chica and Bonnie and... What? What was that? I never felt so uncomfortable since the first time I saw Howard the Duck! Let's move on. Mangle attacks Chica and Bonnie goes to the rescue and... <laughs> Wait, how is Bonnie running 60 miles per hour now? And by the way, this is the longest pizzeria corridor I've ever seen in my life! 
right when you thought Mangle could actually hurt Chica, and come on guys, she deserves this. Slaughtering your ex's new girlfriend is a very bad thing to do. Anyway, Foxy arrives and saves Chica, so that Mangle can realize how evil she's become. Again, I still think she's pretty justified. In spite of this, Mangle runs away, and suddenly an eerie presence lurks in the dark. Gee, a rabbit-like shape missing one ear, I wonder who he could be. How could you do such a thing? I would never use violence to satisfy my anger. I'm sorry, Foxy, you'll never love me again now. If you ever loved me in the first place, you know, the script is not really clear about our backstory. Don't worry, Chica, you can only speak me instead. Hmm, sounds like an okay refund after all. So Foxy goes in search for Mangle and... Am I drunk or was there LSD in my lunch? What the heck is this slow-mo effect? Anyway, Chica convinces Foxy that she's a good girl now, and after a long silence... Tony, have you ever heard the voice acting? They're very good friends now. So Bonnie gets jealous and... Oh, come on! This was based on an indie horror game with killer robots, murderous psychopaths and dead children! How was that supposed to become a fucking telenovela? How was that supposed to be? Let's go back to Mangle, who receives the visit of... Hello, my dear. Okay, at this point Tony Crynite found a budget and added the voice cast to the show. How is he gonna explain this sudden change of format in terms of movie logic? There's nothing you can do about it. Sounds good enough. Let's go on. Who's the mysterious guy? They call me Springtrap. Springtrap? Oh, what a twister, what a twister! Yeah, the shadowy figure is actually Springtrap, voiced by Laughing Aina. But why is he so interested in Mangle? Stay with me forever, as my bride. What? You heard me, Mangle. Marry me, and we will reign together over this place. So, let me get it straight. Springtrap wants to take over the pizzeria, but first he needs to marry someone, so he got a cupcake ring for the occasion... Yeah, that was definitely LSD in my lunch. Mangle says no, but Springtrap has planned everything. What's that? A sort of remote control. This little device can reset an animatronic at a distance of 20 yards. This, in particular, belongs to Foxy. What do you mean? If you reject me, Foxy will be... erased. Blackmail, of course. But wait, if this was all part of a big plan, should we suppose that everything that happened was Springtrap's idea? You know, the whole Foxy and Chica fighting, Chica going nuts, Mangle going nuts here. Is he like the dark puppet master behind all of this since the very beginning? Well, almost. At least Tony must know the truth. I have to stop being so optimistic. Mangle eventually gives up, and they're a married couple now. With no actual ceremony, or a priest, or not even a best man, they're just... married! Hey guys, it's Tony Crynet Logic, stop wondering! <laughs> Meanwhile, Foxy Chick and Bonnie are looking for Mangle everywhere, with no success. Wow, this pizzeria is wider than a military base, and possibly even more colorless. By the way, I love how there's just one single poster over the wall. Stop that! Bonnie thinks it's better to ask Freddy for help, but nobody seems to give a damn. And that's why we should get more We just have to keep searching, but we can't do that on our own. Oh, poor Bonnie is probably the only innocent guy in this old pizza lageria here. Give him some credit for heaven's sake. Oh, that's what I've been trying we to need some help. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? Follow me! I really hate these guys. Freddy is in his office looking at his monitor and... Oh, oh geez, I hope his hands are not that busy down there. Oh yeah, you sexy little thing. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. Oh shit. 
No, Fred is just a workaholic. He was only counting bills. For whatever reason. Why are you counting bills anyway? Holy Tony knows. The guys tell Freddy why they're here, and here goes my favorite line. Mabel disappeared. No kidding! You mean after you suddenly made her name make sense? Okay, it's my favorite character, period. Freddy would prefer counting bills, but eventually decides to help the trio. But once we find her, that's it. I have better things to do than to get caught up in you guys' ridiculous robo-romantics. That's incredible! This single sentence summarizes the whole review! But before they go, Foxy acts pretty suspiciously. Better things to do? Hey, someone's gotta run this place. What could that mean? Is Foxy a bad guy? Was that a signal for the cockroach to go and warn Springtrap? They're on their way. Very well. I knew it! Fox and Springtrap were allies since the very beginning! That's a pretty clever twist, I didn't see that coming. And talking about twists, we're about to find out another tiny little truth about Springtrap's plan. You see, a long time ago, this place wasn't known as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It belonged to me and to a very old friend of mine, Mr. Fredbear. Oh my god, Mr. Fredbear, no! It's terrible, please! Let him be anyone but Mr. Fredbear! Oh, the horror! The horror! Who the hell is Mr. Fredbear? We find out that Mr. Fredbear was actually a pretty jolly guy, and even Springtrap was very friendly. Look, he's even playing with creepy faceless children! But then Freddy arrived at the pizzeria and decided to change the place, even though Fredbear was not very happy about it. To the point that he decided to smash Freddy Fazbear to death with a hammer? Tony, you have a strange concept about solving problems, you know that? By the way, if the pizzeria was owned by Springtrap and Fredbear, then why didn't they simply fire Freddy? I mean, did they even hire him? According to Springtrap, he just entered the building and started interfering with their business. Put down the hammer, just call the police! I don't understand. The moment of the fight is told in black and white steel frames, which is kind of cool, and kind of easier to animate. Fredbear died and Springtrap got banished. Again, just call the police and get rid of that squatter, come on! But Springtrap didn't give in. He hid in the old warehouse of the pizzeria and remained silent for a long, long time, secretly planning his revenge. But what is this revenge about, exactly? In all these years, I kept myself quite busy. It's time to finally set things right. Holy cow, we've moved from the Swan Princess to freaking Psycho! But I'm missing something here. What does this have to do with me? Exactly! How is Fredbear linked to Mangle? What about the marriage, the ring? Freddy has used some parts of Fredbear to build the new animatronics. Oh, nice! This means that Freddy created his friends taking body parts from a corpse. Now we've moved from Psycho to Frankenstein. But unfortunately, the chip containing his personality was taken too. Oh no, 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 you're not going there, right? It's inside you, Mangle. The chip is inside you. No. You're lying! No! It's madness, and it gets worse. Fredbear's essence is contained within you. Naturally, the chip was dormant, but I found a way to wake it up again. You will sadly be turned off to allow my friend to live, but it's a necessary sacrifice. Then the whole marriage plan was just a setup for allowing Mangle to wear the ring that will bring Fredbear back to life, causing Mangle to be lost in oblivion? That's what I call logic! Mangle accepts her fate and leaves us with a tear-jerking final monologue. 
I had everything I could wish for. Foxy loved me. And I loved him too. It was the beginning of something new. And now it's all turned. It's so sad that you hear good convincing voice acting in such a movie. And then this happens. I forgive you, Springtrap. Springtrap? I forgive you. What's that supposed to mean? Is Mangle the reincarnation of a faceless creepy girl? Is Springtrap hallucinating? Tony, can you help me understand this? I hate you so much! Springtrap pulls a button and the switching process begins. Oh, come on, how can you take this seriously when you get a cupcake ring, a cupcake remote control and flu or pink lightning going everywhere? Let's move on. Freddy and friends finally arrive to the old warehouse, still looking for Mangle, and Springtrap can reveal himself to his old enemy. Strangely enough, he's kind of more sadistic against Foxy than Freddy. Oh, the loving fox, looking for his beauty. Don't worry, Mangle's here, but I'm afraid she won't hear you. <laughs> Such a bastard. But wait, wasn't Foxy involved in this plan? You know, the cockroach, the bill on the floor? I thought Foxy was a bad guy, I thought... Oh no, no way! Could this mean that Tony Crynite just ignored or forgot about that sequence and simply went on with the story? Wow! Oh, shut up! You had one good twist and you just left it behind? This is the most stupid script ever written! Or not written, I'm sure! Fred Bear appears, Fred is scared shitless and... Uh, whoa! What's this? I mean, did Tony die of a fatal heart attack? <laughs> and was replaced by another animator? Try to spot the difference here. The final struggle starts and wow, they should have added the elf bars into these scenes. <laughs> Freddy and Fredbear engage in furious battle. And is it me or there's something a little ambiguous about them? Can't help myself. You know too well I need you close. Can't help myself. In the meantime, Springtrap keeps acting as an asshole with Foxy. I had to switch her off to bring Fredbear back. But don't be sad. She's still living inside him, locked away. Now she doesn't have to look like this anymore. That son of a b Foxy is rightfully pissed off, so he attacks Springtrap and... Whoa! That was gruesome! Where does it come from, Tony? You've never used the graphic violence in your videos. Oh. But right before Springtrap dies, the Chekhov's gun reappears and the evil rabbit resets Foxy via remote control. Well, it's a fortune he didn't forget about it. Because I did. Fredbear is determined to kill Freddy, but at the last moment this happens. Angle. Foxy loved you so much. Does that mean anything to you? It's me. It's you, Mangle. I know you're there. Look at him. Look at him. Is this what you want? Oh, not again with the corny lightning, please. Oh, well, I guess the day is saved again thanks to the power of love. It's so cheesy, I can feel the cheese running through my veins. And possibly causing me an embolism. Mangle is back, Chica is sorry, and everything is fine. Or is it? What happened to Foxy? Yeah, there's still the Foxy problem. But I'm sure he's going to be fine. The power of love will save him too. Right? Bonnie rebuilds Mangle and... Oh, Tony, you're such a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> then it's time to fix Foxy. Foxy! 
Okay, let's get ready for another power love moment. Any news? Uh, not really. But I've seen the receipts, and this month seems a bit better than the last. Good. Maybe people are finally starting to like Foxy again. E even though... Well... You know. Yeah. We all know. Oh, does it mean that Foxy is really off now? He'll never get his memory back? And he's never going to perform a Bohemian Rhapsody guitar solo again? Apparently, yes. No happy ending this time, folks. That was unexpected. You don't have to be sorry. It's not your fault, Chica. <laughs> F***ing yeah! Yeah, it is her fault, Bunny! Stop protecting her! She's a freaking maniac! Come on! I don't think I'll ever be able to accept this. But in Tony's world, there are no real consequences for attempted murder, especially when you have a cute romantic scene. The cheese is getting corny! So, is Mangle and Foxy's love dream over? That country music in the background may be suggesting otherwise. Memories are one thing, but deep down there's something... something more. That's the well, don't you worry. What did that mean? Has Foxy magically regained his memory because... Because? Is he falling in love with Mangle again, even if he doesn't remember anything? Is Tony going to explain? Wow! Ah, this movie wants to hurt me! I mean, the voice acting was really good and the last episodes were animated better, but the story goes from generic melodrama to insane science fiction, not counting all the plot holes. You know, let's say it's so corny that it's almost adorable. Well, at least there are no cliffhangers in the end. Well, at least there are no sequels. Oh, you got to be kidding me! I'm not going to touch that. I do have a reputation, after all. I'm the Nostalgia Critique, I remember it, so you don't... Oh. Sorry. Hello! Hi, Mr. Cryonite. This is the real Nostalgia Critic. I'm gladly going to sue you for plagiarism. My lawyer is setting... Hello? Still going to hell. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching and thanks a huge lot for this incredible achievement. Really, it's beyond amazing. When I first started this channel, I would have never imagined to reach 2 million subscriptions. And here we are, 7 years later, celebrating together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, a super thanks to Doug Walker who let this special be really special. I'm fingering like crazy right now. See you soon, guys. Stay awesome. Grazie.